All right, welcome back. Hopefully you watched the video on GMOs to get a little bit more information on that technology. Uh, the next technology we're going to talk about related to agriculture is pesticide resistance. I will let you know that pesticide resistance, we will talk a lot more about that in our next unit as well. So we're just kind of giving an overview right now of kind of what it is. All right, so pesticide resistance. Pesticides, uh, that would be an important thing for us to know at the beginning. Pesticides are something that farmers use to kill unwanted pests on crops. So pesticides are things like uh, different insects and different uh, grubs that may affect how a crop can grow. Um, things like locusts can really affect crops very, they can be very detrimental for crops if they uh, are overrun. So farmers, in order to prevent loss of crops to these pests, will spray a chemical pesticide on there in order to kill those pests. Uh, so when a farmer sprays a field of crops with pesticides, using those pesticides, kills most but not all pests. So it kills most of them, but not necessarily all of them. Uh, it's kind of like if you look at an antibacterial cleaner, it never says kills 100% of germs. It always says kills 99.9% .9 of germs. It's that same sort of idea. It kills most of the pests, but some of those pests are still going, going to survive. Uh, those who survive, Pests reduce. Those pests pass on this for being pesticide spring. So I'm effective. The pest effective. So you may use a pesticide uh, once using it and over that side in years. That farmer will find that eventually, even though he's using this pesticide, it's not killing all the pests. It's not really doing its job. Right? That's a really big problem for some farmers. Um, that kind of ties back into GMOs, right? GMOs, one thing that they modify is being naturally pest resistant. It would be really good if a plant was naturally resistant to pests, meaning pests didn't find it very tasty, so they're not going to eat that crop or go after it. That's one way GMOs can really help to prevent this problem. Um, pesticide resistant isn't so much a technology as it is an issue. It's one of those things that's trying to be solved um, by things like transgenic organisms and GMOs. It's really trying to solve this pesticide resistance problem. Uh, like I said before, we will talk more about pesticide resistance in the future in our next unit. Uh, but for right now, we're going to move on to our last technology for today. And our last technology for today is cloning. So as I mentioned before in class, although we are talking about agriculture today, um, there are some technologies that involve both agriculture and medicine. Cloning is one of those, right? Uh, we are talking about cloning with agriculture today just because it is an area where it's much more common, a little less controversial. Uh, but there definitely is cloning that is happening in the medical field as well, which you can research on your own or maybe you already did if you made that poster in class. All right, so cloning in terms of agriculture is used with a lot of livestock. So when we say livestock, we mean things like animals that are raised on a farm for a particular purpose. So what, that might be um, dairy cows to get their milk, it might be beef cattle to turn into beef to eat, uh, chickens either for their eggs or for their meat also, any uh, animal that we produce on a farm in order to get um, food essentially. So livestock that with desirable traits. So let's say that you have a dairy farm and you have this one cow who has always produced the most milk, right? As a dairy farmer, you want cows that produce a lot of milk. So it would be des that's a desirable trait for that cow to have is high milk production, right? What we can do is we can clone that particular trait. So livestock with desirable traits are going to be cloned, are cloned to ensure the young livestock have the same traits. The young 
livestock have the same traits? Right, so some important things to know about cloning. Cloning is one of those things that's in a lot of sci-fi films, right? You may know what cloning is uh, in terms of science fiction, in terms of movies, but I want to make sure you really understand what cloning is in real life, okay? When we say clones, we mean that they have identical DNA. So those clones are going to have the exact same set of DNA. Even though they have identical DNA, they may appear different. There are some genes that you have that are um, not completely influential over a certain trait. Uh, there are some traits that you have that are influenced by your environment or are slightly predicted by chance. Um, so although the individuals are going to look extremely similar, they may be slightly different. For example, if you are um, cloning a chicken. You may have one chicken with a certain spotted pat pattern and when you clone them the pattern might be slightly different even though they have the same DNA. So just be aware of that. Doesn't mean that they are 100 percent identical in appearance. They may be slightly different even though their DNA is exactly the same. When we clone something the clone starts as a baby. So this goes with anything that we clone. A clone does not make a copy of an old, old cow. It's actually going to go through development. It's going to be uh, born and go through um, DNA. And a. Last thing we need to uh, So with this, I'm going to clone. Example, we need to make chickens. If you are a poultry farmer who raises chickens in order to butcher them for their meat, it would be beneficial to you to have larger chickens, especially if you get paid by the pound. If you're a farmer who gets paid by the pound, it would be beneficial for larger chickens so you can make more money off of each chicken. Um, this does bring up the ethical debate of uh, if a chicken is too large, uh, there have been cases of chickens getting so large and so fat that they can no longer walk. There have been concerns about the actual health of the organism in that case. Um, so that's one of the cons to this. Uh, but if we're looking at it from an agriculture point of view, an economics point of view, it would be beneficial for that farmer to have those large chickens so they could essentially make more money. Um, and another one, like we mentioned before, would be a high yield dairy cow. So if you have a particular cow that uh, consistently produces a larger amount of milk, other cow, you to have organism so that you can more. So cloning from an economic, a business, a business owner maximize it, maximize by milk, have larger muscles, more meat. That would be a good idea to rate. Also clones, for example, right? So it really culture. Medicine is different, different set. So really cool when you're looking at sources for cloning online. Um, Make sure that your sources are really coming from a reputable place. Um, there's a lot of false information about cloning in um, medicine. Uh, so just be aware of that. If you have questions, make sure you let me know. Um, once you have finished these notes on page 10, I would like you to watch the cloning video that is right after this video on the page. And then make sure you take the survey on the bottom where you are going to have to, have to answer a few questions about what we covered today in the notes.